Hey guys, how you doing? We've got enough, uh, another tough opponent this, this weekend with Alabama State coming to, um, to town. Um, you know, they're led defensively by Colton Adams. You know, he does a really good job for, for them. Uh, he's a big old boy. You know, uh, he creates some problems for us. He really does. Um, 57, uh, Trey Corn Thomas is another one that, um, that we have to keep an eye on as well. You know, this, defensively, man, they, they've been tearing it up. They haven't given up more than 23 points a game. Uh, so we had a really good challenge uh, for this, us this weekend. So uh, we're very excited about the task at hand. But um, it's going to take some work to get it done for sure. Talk about the explosion in the first half. I mean, 38 points a lot score in the first half. Yeah, well, defensively, they helped us out a whole lot now. They gave us a short field. Yeah. And when you get a short field, you know, you can, you're supposed to be able to do some things. You know, and having a kicker, that gives us some confidence as well. You know, Dylan came in and did a really good job for us. You know, but, um, you know, guys executed. You know, we won first down. That helps out a lot. You can get our tempo going when we win first down. And, um, you know, early on, Jason and those guys were making really good decisions. Er was, was running the ball um, really, really well. So was Ahmad. And uh, that helped us out tremendously. Yeah, Irv's won newcomer twice now. Just really? Talk about his, uh, yeah. yeah, newcomer of the week twice. So just mm -hmm. talk about his emergence now as kind of one of your featured running backs because you got a couple. Yeah, so what you get with him, man, just a, a tenacious mentality when he runs the football. You know, it's rare that the first guy gets him down. And uh, he's always straining for more yards. Uh, but he practices it that way. So I'm not surprised when I see him doing that on Saturdays. Um, and then, too, he's, he's become one of our leaders as well. You know, he's a very emotional guy, passionate guy. So, um, you know, guys feed off of that. You know, and then, too, he, put, he has put together a resume where guys will listen to him. You know, they will um, heed his instruction. How excited, are the, how excited are the guys for homecoming? I'll tell you what. Um, they better be excited for the next game. You know what I mean? Um, so, to me, that's, that's the most important thing. You know, um, I got a lot of family that's coming into town. I'm pretty sure they do as well. But if we don't put together a product that, that looks good on the field, uh, all of us would be, you know, a little bit upset afterwards. So, um, today's practice was really good. Guys were locked in. They were focused. So, uh, that should let you know something that they're excited about the next game. It is helpful because, you know, we emphasize every week, feed the stud, you know, and now that, you know, Ahmad and Herb um, has been making plays, Rico's making plays, Seven is back with us now. Um, you got Fabian that's coming on as well. So you got some guys you can, you know, put the ball in their hands and, and they make some incredible plays, but explosive plays for you. So um, we have to be creative in, in that uh, sense as well. But the great thing about our team, though, regardless who, who's getting the football, who's making the plays, those guys are all supportive of one another, and that helps out as a coach as well. Coach, can you talk about all three of your tight ends? They seem like they're interchangeable. Yes. So, um, you know, you talk about DJ. You know, DJ is just a steady guy, and he is very knowledgeable uh, in our offense. You know, Saturday, and, and, and as a matter of fact, he, he fixed the problem. Uh, he got Jason, you know, corrected uh, on a particular play. So he's very savvy. He's very knowledgeable. Uh, I trust him when he's on the field. Um, Hayden brings a uh, physical mindset. You know, if you notice, Hayden is pretty much on the ball when he's in the game, uh, especially in our 12 personnel sets. And he has a physical mentality, and he's really catching the ball very well now. And then Jensie is one that can really stretch the field vertically. Jensie is, um, you know, has really come on from a standpoint of his physicality, which – we trust him more to put him in the game, to, to stretch the field vertically, uh, but um, he, he does a really good job for us as well. You put up, offense put up about you know, more than 30 points in the first, in the first half. Mm -hmm. How do you keep that momentum going in the second half? Yeah, so, and, and that, that's the thing that, with us still being a, a young team, you know, just the focus, the mindset of, you know, every play, every drive has a life of its own. And it starts with a mentality at practice. And we have to de continue to develop that mentality, you know, uh, that because we're up, we can't let up, you know. Uh, because we're up, we have to stay focused on the task at hand. And, um, and we're still developing that. You know, that's something that, that we harp on on a daily basis. And our guys are starting to get it, but we still have a ways to go from that perspective. You mentioned Colton Adams uh, as, as offensive coordinator. How do you somewhat neutralize him? So you see, I'm sure you won't necessarily show 
shut them fully down? How do you neutralize them? In your, in your yeah, that, that's a really good question. I, I don't think you can just totally shut them out, but some of the things that we do with misdirections and, and, um, and you know, tempo, uh, hopefully that would get them tired out. But, man, that, he's going to make his plays, but um, we're going to make ours as well. And, uh, but, yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal football player. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of guys that will fight through injuries because they know if they are out for an extended period of time, they won't, uh, you know, have that same level of, um, of um, I would say, same level of, of awareness, same level of intentionality, same level of, uh, of us trusting them. So we have guys, you know, that, that fight through injuries because they know that in certain positions, we have some pretty good depth, you know, that guys can come in and make plays. So um, I, I, I cherish that as a, as a coordinator that, you know, we got guys that you can, you know, plug in and play and, and don't miss a beat. Coach, the last couple of games, um, your offense has always responded when someone's come down and scored. You guys have always either went for it on fourth down and, and got it or, or mm-hmm. come back and let it score. So you have to be happy. So can you talk about that? Yeah, so, you know, you want us to, you want an offense that's going to respond, but more importantly, you want an offense that's going to be efficient every single drive, you know. So um, I don't look at it as, you know, we responded because they scored. I look at it as we're being efficient offensively. And, uh, you know, our goal is to be a fundamentally efficient scoring machine. That, that, that's our goal. And uh, in order to do that, we got to protect the ball. You know, we got to run the football. We got to create explosive plays and we got to go fast. And, um, and that's one thing that uh, we harp on on a daily basis. So uh, it's not so much responding, it's more so of just being efficient offensively. Coach, you mentioned injuries a moment ago. Jensi went down in that game mm-hmm. last week. How, how was he doing? Uh, Jensi, uh, he, he's a little banged up. Um, I don't know what Coach Taylor told you about that. Um, uh, it's probably uh, a week or so for him to get back. Um, and that, and that, that, that hurts us because of, he was just coming on now. He really was. And... Um, not, not just from you know, an athletic standpoint, just a maturity standpoint, a leadership standpoint. He was really coming on for us. And uh, that, that hurts us. And, and not just um, what we do on Saturdays, but you know, leading up to that point to get to Saturdays. Thanks. Um, Coach, can you talk about the third middle team, 115 in rushing yards, and Brown's 47 yard touchdown pass? Yeah, so. Uh, Irv, you know, at the at the half, he only had 47 yards, you know, and man, I and then the game, I was surprised he had 115. But if you notice his running style, man, he's always falling forward. He's always falling forward, and uh, he's he's gaining extra yards. We call those the hitting yardage, and uh, so that's his mentality, that's his mindset. And I wasn't surprised at the end of the game that he had 115 yards. The play you're talking about, in particular with um, with Fabian. Um, that was a double move that we did. So we, we ran the rollout a couple times, and uh, we saw from up top that those guys were biting, and we just made a double move, and, and uh, he was wide open. And, and some of those passes, when they're so wide open, those some, to me, those are some of the toughest passes to make. So, uh, you know, kudos to Jason for, you know, putting the ball up there that Fabian can catch. And uh, it was at a huge moment in the game to give us, give us uh, some, some – um, uh, a, a bigger lead. I think that that made it 28, and then we came back and scored again with seven that made it 35. So that was a big moment in the game for us.